thank you all for coming to share this amazing space. I think this is incredible. Um, I have three poems today. Um, they're all about love, I think, to some extent, because I'm a corny edamame kind of person. <laughs> all right. Uh, the first first one is uh, is called "When an Introverted Poet Loves You." When an introverted poet loves you, they don't come in waves, at least not the kind that soothes you. When they come, they'll reach you like high winds and flip you upside down. Their minds pulse so fast they can shake your senses awake. They'll probably tell you secrets in their own language, and of course, you have to learn the combinations to understand them. Poets share stories. An introverted poet sometimes tells stories to cats and dogs, sunrises and sunsets. You don't always get to peek into this collection, but there are stories that they would read to you over and over again. The kind that are just stanzas on the shelf waiting to be put together. The ones that you help fill in the blanks like a middle-aged couple with crossword puzzles. You'll memorize your wrinkled skin when the two of you take a bath too long on a warm summer's night. The way your sticky breath fills up the room and you don't care to air it. They jot down the 10 ways you laugh, like remembering a coffee order with uh, less ice, almond milk, three pumps of syrup, and no whipped cream. The stories with you in it are usually the best ones. Remember that. When an introverted poet loves you, they'll say, I love you with a lifetime of metaphors. You are the new words they learn to describe their surroundings. That 100th haiku they've written about the sleepy sky when they're driving home from work. You are the picture of a bright spot against the dark background they text you because the moon makes their hearts swollen. So do you. They love words. The way words are curated to shed light onto their souls. But there are times when they can't reach for that glow. Times when you would slip through their fingers no matter how hard they push the palms together trying to close the gaps. They start with cracked lips. Fumble for the right opening line to say something. Try not to rush them. Don't get mad when they take a week and essay and a follow-up report to say, hey, let's move in together. They're not flaky. They're just easily overwhelmed. When an introverted poet loves you, they'll stop explaining everything they do and realize that not everything needs a definition. They have the best time riding in the car with you in silence. There are a thousand ways of being quiet, coexist with you, and you believe in shadows, that they are in charge of beauty we carry in unconscious states, waiting to be sewn onto our skeletons. You see them as clear as the night sky. When an introverted poet loves you, you know that shy fingertips can describe love louder than lock lips and pressed tongues do. When an introverted poet loves you, you have someone to meet you halfway in a world made of broken things and fuzzy life stories, and once in a while, these are written into adventures with commas that never end. And we'll have a love that feels like a homeward journey. Thank you. My mother asks, what is this you're wearing? I tell her it's a bulletproof vest. My mother asks if I respected her. I ask if she loved me. 15 years as a queer daughter, 26 years as a daughter. But my mother doesn't see me as her child, her pride, her equal. You see, Ma, if we were love, we would hug and never lose the warmth from your womb. From the moment your eyes waited for mine to open, we would reel the tape back to when I was four, and you would cling on to the label on my shirt because I run too fast and you hate chasing after me. I may not have labels that make the back of my neck itch anymore, but I want to go home, and what I mean is, I want to move out of my skin and come home. I have a sun, and I need to start orbiting around it. If I were to wait for my echo to bounce back and tell me I need to be louder, my voice would have been too sticky, too weak to climb up my vertebrae, and I can't wait for a far off movement to find me, give me new escapes and pray for me to live. As much as this is my life, it will not wait for me to pass every test because as I speak, I am being broken down into chemical elements and one day, one day I will leap into nothingness and that is my ultimate end. So every day is a season for growing, and this is what my mind sees. 
and expands and stretches out as majestically as the Himalayas. My lungs may not carry me up to 8,900 meters, but my legs will get me to the base camp. So I'm telling the child and me to run. Run at the maximum speed, with shells dissolving into my heels, pegging themselves onto crevices that need feeling. All I sense now is the precise weight of my body. It doesn't matter who I used to be. I am not an abandoned astronaut waiting for a rescue mission. I am elevating from my bruises. All I must do is to learn to decide on my own intrinsic value. The world is not going to be honest but harsh with me. So all I need to do is pour a little more love inward. It's indispensable. And I can definitely afford to love myself. So when someone comes along and asks what I'm wearing, I'll recognize the strength anchoring me between muscle of softness and say, it's a bulletproof vest. And I am bulletproof. Thank you. I have the last poem. Uh, it's, I've never read it before. Uh, I think it's about, uh, it's about my partner, basically. <coughs> Uh, it sort of encapsulates how I felt from our first date. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> our hearts rise slowly above the callousing flares, embracing as our breaths religiously sip into the atmosphere unannounced to the unknown. Our toes soak in tights of hushed tingles, a kinetic dance of an ensemble of stars orchestrated beneath our skin, as if quietly drifting out to wrap these marble <coughs> bodies in stardust, and afraid of the unknown. When you float into love, you fall with someone, and you follow it. You watch yourself stand at the center of your eyes, perched against their gravity with a million stars overlapping one another. If you were to look at yourselves, you would see delicate beings obscurely fused to be as bright as ember in moments that will not pause for anything less or more. So here we are, with a backseat view of ourselves. We have arrived with our carried bodies as a hallowed motion as a hallowed ocean in motion, as streams of light held together by a universal word and action and faith and anchor. So we love, we love. And we love. Thank you. The next uh, poet, the next performer, is no stranger to the stage, to the mic, to our hearts. Uh, this is the person who you will always associate with the phrase love and light. Give it up for Sheena Bogdan! 